The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 445 1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the October 22nd. Terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Of course, you know the easiest way to do that. It's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Hey, today... We're going to go look at the circumstances of the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. We're going to go figure out what they're communicating to you and I. And I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. So I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in 877-927-6648. Internationally, 727-445-1044. Because this is Terrific Thursday. Of course, it's the Hotel California. Sponsored by Tiger Financials Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow trading up nearly 300 points at 17,466. S&P is up 35 points at 2053. NASDAQ composite up about 80 points at 4919. Russell's up 11 points. The DAX finished up 253 points. The uh, FTSE up 27. Gold is flat. Silver's up 15 cents. Light sweet crude is uh, flat. Uh, natural gas is uh, down another three pennies out here. Leading the charge to the upside, it is auto zone. It's in a new zone. Well, I don't know if it's in a new zone, but we're going to go check it out at some point. It's up 15 bucks, up 2%. Alliance Data Systems, ADS up 5%, 13 bucks. BlackRock up 13 bucks. Amazon up 12. Granger Worldwide up 11. To the downside, Am Surge surging to the downside, off 15%, down 21 bucks. Bailey and Pharmaceuticals off 20 bucks today. Adeptus Healthcare off 17. United Health. So it's the healthcare sector that populates our uh, charge to the uh, downside. Uh, Chipotle off another eight bucks. But let's go up to uh, Tallahassee to our man Ben. Ben, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How you doing today? Very good. How are we doing, Steve? Excellent. So, uh, thanks so much. You, uh, it says you want to speak about or discuss the S and P. So, tell me what you're looking at or what I can do to assist you. Yeah, great. So, um, I've got a pretty good pulse on the daily, the intraday trading, but um, I think what has happened to me since the 2008 Lehman Brothers crash is I've convinced myself I'm smarter than the market. So, <laughs> I actually missed a lot of that run in my 401k on a weekly and a monthly basis. And I'd hate to see that happen again. So, okay. you know, having that recent, whatever that was, a 15% decline, do you see that as a missed opportunity as an entry point in a long-term holding, or do you feel there's going to be another opportunity? Uh, well, Okay, so you know, so this is great. So you're you're asking really more so about long term. So let's focus on the long term, yeah. as yeah. opposed to you know what's going on intraday. We'll I'll come back and take a look at the intraday stuff, and we'll look at the signals that were present and see what they mean, and see if there's any other signals out here. And because it's the S and P 500 that uh, you had uh, mentioned, let's go take a look at what the S and P 500 has or hasn't done, and we'll go ahead and we'll filter in a couple of the other indices as well. Perfect. So, so in the case of the S and P 500 specifically, if we uh, just simply take a look at on the monthly basis where we're at, the first thing that I would do is just simply look at the uh, trend line, and that trend line that I'm referring to is one that comes off the most important trend line, which is the one coming off of the March 2009 lows. I use that as a touch point. I just simply use as a touch point the October 2011 low out there. And what we can see is in the case of the S&P 500, even with the decline that we saw um, through that August 24th uh, bottom, 
September 29th bottom, that the trend line inside the S&P 500 was never threatened. So that being said, you know, it was never even challenged. And so there was uh, the only thing that we have inside the S&P 500 that suggests that there is a potential top of significance at this stage of the game is the uh, seventh wave move, which uh, culminated in the month of May, wasn't confirmed until June. That's that letter G on my system. Also up at that same level, during the uh, month of February in 2015, we had price moving higher doing it with less relative uh, strength out there. We got a bearish engulfing candle that didn't take place until June. That also confirmed that seventh wave move. And at this stage of the game, um, you know, there's nothing that says that the market has broken down. That's what the S&P 500 says on its monthly chart. Doesn't, uh, and with us being so close, now the monthly low for the S&P 500 monthly candle, monthly uh, swing point low, is 2134. And right now you're trading at uh, 2053. So you've got less than, you've got about 80 points to go before you actually get into that swing point on a monthly basis. As far as would I put my money to risk here, knowing that you're so close to that swing point, the answer to that question would be, no, I wouldn't. I mean, if you, you know, now you're talking about maybe missing another one. Is it, I don't know, 3%, 4%? I would probably wait for a confirmation and see that high taken out. So that's just looking at the monthly chart. That would be my first instinctive move out here that that, that I would take a look at. When you, when you, I, see, when you if you would, I'm sorry, if you if you would see that taken out, uh, how do you view that? Do you view that as a? Because uh, I know I I'm familiar with many of the uh, of the technical uh, indicators that that the team uses. Would you consider that a new wave up A, or would you consider that a uh, going through a B point? How would you how would you view that if we, you know, I guess uh, what I'm looking for is some kind of indication that because uh, I agree with you, I'd hate to I'd hate to put an investment in into the 401k now, knowing that we're that close. But what what would convince you one way or the other that we're I, I tell you how, how I would view it. I, I would view it as I would go back to the original pattern. It, ha, it has been in play, still is in play, has always been in play since the breakout in March of 2013. And that is this. The S&P 500 had been trading with inside a sideways consolidation worth about 800 points. And whenever a consolidation pattern is broken, it provides you and I with a opportunity to measure what the approximate move of the next uh, move would be. And that just simply says we had 800 points, in essence, to the high of 2007. So the high of 2007, 1576, at 800 points, that takes you to about 2476. So the target is 2350, 2450, somewhere in that range would be the at least the initial target for the S&P 500. Now, here's what we could also say, Ben. If that is, you know, let's look at the, both the bullish and the bearish case out here. And so we're looking at the bullish case, certainly inside the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 is going to do that, then we're going to go take a look at the NASDAQ composite here. Because what the NASDAQ composite is also going to do is going to be able to break above its 2,000 high. So that we don't have to just rely upon one index to make a decision with regard to when you put your longer-term money back at risk out here. Because inside the NASDAQ composite, the high that formed back in uh, March of 2003, and uh, March of 2000, was 51.32. We know that that level has been tested. It was also tested with a price relative strength divergent pattern, meaning price went higher, did it on less relative uh, strength out there. We saw the bearish reversal signal. That was the month of August. <coughs> uh, we also have a seventh wave move up there. If that gets taken out with conviction, meaning the high, and I would say at this stage here, I would just simply use the high of uh, July, which inside the NASDAQ is uh, 5231. The NASDAQ has now a 4,000-point consolidation because, in essence, the NASDAQ has been consolidating ever since about the, um, what time frame, uh, 1997. So that, in essence, is, is, is a version of its consolidation pattern. And if it breaks above that level, look, there's other things that we'll take a look at. But the bottom line is, at this stage of the game, because price was repelled there, this is a real long-term consolidation. Now, 
let's we have to we we cannot mitigate the mere fact that we have these these significant reversal highs that are out there and it's really incumbent upon yourself and myself to always look at both sides of the trade to the downside out here you and i have a couple of things to look at that specifically being the dow because the dow and and it would be the dow and the new york stock exchange in the case of the dow here's what you and i know coming off of the march 2009 lows and then using that October of 2011 low, the trend, which is our friend, has not been broken. I had a great call with a client earlier uh, this morning, and we were talking about how back here in the month of uh, August, um, you know, if you if we, we if we replayed my shows, I had taken a significant uh, bearish outlook with price moving down into uh, February or April of next year. In order for that to have fulfilled itself, though, that required this trend being broken. And that's the same type of trend that was in place back in 2000 when it was broken. It led to lower price for a quite a number of months. The same thing in 2007. So we actually have a really good line of demarcation, which won't come from the S&P first. It won't come from the NASDAQ first as far as breaking its trend. Where it would come from would be the Dow Jones. And at this stage here, what you and I know, this also has a seventh wave move to the upside. It has a price relative strength divergent. What you and I know as of right now is price had pulled back to a support level. If there was ever a time for you to have pulled the trigger, and I would understand why not pulling the trigger would make sense, that really would have been it versus doing it right here, right now. What I would say, though, is that if, in fact, we do get a retracement, which I still believe that we will, and I don't know the depth of that retracement, it could just be sideways and a little bit of, and a little bit of a consolidation. But there is another pullback or retracement. This party that's going on today, um, you know, is, and we'll, we'll take a look at what's going on on a daily basis, but I do believe that there's another retracement that will occur. And if, in fact, that retracement is on light volume, that then would be the time where you could go ahead and put that longer-term money back to uh, work out here. But I don't know that I would chase it right here, right now. And I could be absolutely you, wrong on that call. Yeah, well, of course, right? So, unfortunately, none of us have a crystal ball. So, so you feel pretty confident that, what is it based on mainly the, the seventh wave, that on a weekly and monthly basis, you're, you're, you're seeing it, you're predicting another uh, pullback? It's not really me that's predicting it. And so I want to be real clear. This has nothing to do with this. Is You could say it's my interpretation of the charts, but I'll just simply lay out the evidence and the facts and then let, you know, someone else uh, use that information, go back, test it out, you know, do that kind of work on it. Um, so it, it's really, you know, I, it's, it's, I don't get, it's not my opinion. I, I will change my review of what the charts are telling me in a heartbeat as soon as the charts release new information to us so uh, if you want to hold on through the break here you can yeah, i'm sure this yeah. call is uh is sure. helpful to everybody that's out there we're on the line with ben in tallahassee steve Rhodes with tfnn dow's up 302 we'll be right back I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 306, S&P's up 35. We're on the line with Ben in Tallahassee, and we've been taking a look at the S&P 500. Well, actually, we've been taking a look at the monthly, uh, some of the monthly indices, like the NASDAQ Composite, uh, what a breakout above the 2,000 high would mean, uh, the S&P 500, if, in fact, the September 29th bottom uh, was the signif a significant bottom. Uh, where price could run to if, in fact, there is a, a breakout. We took a look at the uh, Dow Jones. So we took a look at, hey, if you break this trend line, that spells lots of trouble ahead. So we know what our, our line of demarcation is. We're going to flip over to some daily charts. But first, Ben, I'm going to throw up on my screen here because you had called about the S&P 500, specifically the weekly chart of the S&P 500 right now. And the horizontal lines that are going across my screen, folks, those are what I refer to as horizontal trading ranges. Now, uh, to my knowledge, Bud Rolfs uh, uh, was the one that uh, crafted the primary trading ranges. And the difference between what Bud does, throw up on your screen. I don't know what that means. Throw up on your screen. It's on my screen. Hopefully you guys are seeing it. I can't get a uh, uh, difference in, in any event. Um, as we take a look at the S&P 500, so the difference between the primary trading range boundary lines and the horizontal trading, rate, horizontal trading ranges that I use is that because I've been able to automate this, um, you know, where a can we use the body of the candle. 
And the body of the candle truly is the essence of price. We use the body of the candle to try to identify the largest number of co-located opens or closes. It doesn't matter whether the body of the candle is an open or closed. And because I've been able to, and a weekly candle is going to have a different close than a monthly, than a daily. So the green lines going across my screen are based upon where weekly closes are at. The red lines are where monthly closes are at. And we can see that last week, uh, price came back uh, to the 1988 level and actually tested the uh, significant support level, as we can speak right now, on a monthly trading range boundary line. If prices get back below that, there's going to be a deeper retracement, maybe even a test of the September 29th uh, level out there. What happened this week, what happened yesterday, is price got down to test the bottom of the weekly uh, horizontal resistance level. And if it doesn't get uh, back below there, then we're going to go look at the daily charts. Maybe the retracement is just back to 1988. Maybe it's back to the 2015 level. And if there's no retracement whatsoever and the market decides to run higher from here, what it says is we go back to our highs inside the S&P 500 in that 2130 area. So that's just the message of the uh, weekly chart. Now, why did I say that the uh, charts are suggesting to you and I that there still is some type of retracement that is uh, due? Or why is it that maybe you should not consider putting your longer-term money at risk if it's not already at risk at the moment? And one of those, there are actually two of those correlations, Ben, come from in bull markets, the Russell 2000 will be out in front. It'll be leading the pack. It will not be pulling the pack higher, but it will be leading the pack. And in bear markets, it is just the opposite. And how do we know if the small caps, specifically when I say the Russell 2000, I'm referring to the small caps, versus the Russell 1000 large caps out there? And what you and I can do is we can do a little mathematical correlation that divides the Russell 2000 by the 1000 out here. And that is the blue line on the bottom of my screen. And as we speak right now, even with this huge move inside the market, that thing hasn't even turned up. It's still pointing downward, and this is a daily chart. The market does well when this, at least this line, is moving higher, and it is not. And it is a huge heads-up message as to the party that's going on out there today inside the market. So that is one element that says, man, you've got to really be careful here. I'm not completely buying in to this uh, move that we've got. Secondly, if we go take a look at the S&P 500, so that was the Russell, you and I can take a look at the consumer discretionary versus the consumer staples area. And this, too, has a correlation, the XLY versus the XLP. And you can see that this, too, is pointed to the downside. And when this points to the downside, the market typically has something wrong with it. You like to see this trend moving to the upside. And even in today's move, it is not. To me, it is not my opinion. It's just simply knowing the nature of the relationship of these ratios that says, man, there's something that just isn't right today. And then I'll throw the third element out there. And that third element is, you know, Mario Draghi and the uh, somehow the investing community today Com investing community today thinks that he just threw out a huge olive branch. And if that's the case, then why is it that the Euro Japanese yen has broken through a trend line out here? It's broken through a trend line. That's never a good thing for the market either. So, Ben, I, I hope that that helps you with regard to my thinking, long term, no, short term. That, that definitely helped. And I, it sounds like the music's coming back. That was quick. Um, could, could just you stay, hold, that just hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we'll, yeah, be right back. Yeah. we'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
option capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up to the second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 289, S&P's up uh, 32. We're still on the line with uh, Ben in Tallahassee. What we've done so far, we've taken a look at longer-term charts monthly. Then we just briefly looked at the weekly chart for the S&P 500. We identified some levels of support, some resistance out there. And then we really started taking a look at the daily charts and the mixed signals. And no matter what, remember, whatever time frame it is that we're looking at, you've got to stay within that time frame. Its message is always going to be slightly different. All right, Ben, so uh, back to you. So uh, a lot of information that I threw out there. What questions um, did I, did I uh, pose for you, or, or what else can I yeah. answer for you? No, those were some really, really good comments, especially about the IWM, because uh, I agree with you. It's, it's, uh, it's very yeah, well. It um, doesn't mean that it won't get back on track. doesn't mean that it can't get back on track. But, but you know, you got a day with, uh, even with the Russell's up eight points, the Dow's up 290. There's, there's a, on the daily charts, and this is what I'm referring to, on the daily time frame, there's a problem out there. Right. No, that's good. Now, uh, just for clarity, when you say seventh wave, and using, I think you're using the Chapman wave, the way I understand it 
is when you get to the seventh wave or G, since that is so rare to occur, do you use that one because it is so rare and there's a good chance that it's the best chance for a trend change? Is that is that the theory behind that? Yeah, I do. You know, how I use it, uh, where I use it all the time is in my for my own personal trading in trading the S&P futures contract. And what I have found, uh, give me a moment here and I'll switch over to uh, that chart. And so um, what I have found is that is the easiest, you know, I always talk about position sizing and how important that is. And when trading the S&P futures or when trading anything, you got to make sure that you have a wide enough stop out there. And when you trade the S&P futures, what I have found is another unique way to be able to really have great money management is that you can place your trade and you can have your stop just simply one tick above that seventh wave, that letter G. Because if it's going to work, uh, it is going to be a spot where you're going to see some type of significant move, as we did yesterday inside of the ES Mini. So I, I use that, and I use it religiously on all different uh, time frames. Um, but I also like to see that occur um, when we have price move higher and less relative strength, as we did here yesterday. When I see that and I take those trades, uh, what I do is I go ahead and I add a number of contracts because, to me, I've got two different types of turning points. But many people might wonder, you know, well, how is it that the market and you know, what did they miss this morning with regard to the market? It wouldn't have been what they missed this morning. It was really what did they miss last night. Now, I was short the ES Mini. I closed out that trade. I went ahead and put in a tighter stop as soon as price had moved lower into the 5 o'clock time frame because it was doing that with less relative weakness out there. And what we got was we, we, we received a number of different uh, bullish reversal signals out here. little hammer candle at 7.30. Went ahead and tightened the stop a little bit more. Just went ahead and let the market take me out of the trade out here. And because on the 30-minute chart, just simply because the uh, point of control was closer to the resistance level, and because I was, you know, eventually going to bed, I decided not to go ahead and put a trade on there. I was going to look at this level as a place to to go short i i did neither uh this morning uh, but but these patterns work um no matter what time frame it is and it doesn't have to just simply be a letter g or a seventh wave you know it can be a combination of patterns that are out there so does that answer your question on the seventh wave yeah good no good stuff no you definitely convinced me to hold off and, and pull the trigger so um i just uh Wait, yeah, like wait for this. Wait for this. Wait for this next retracement. Right. See what happens during this next retracement out here, and uh, you know, in because we should receive one. Now that retracement could just simply be a side. And why do? Why else do I say that a retracement is nearby? Must be coming. We still have a declining tops price oscillator in the New York Stock Exchange, the Nasdaq Composite, and the Dow Jones. And until that pattern gets resolved, the assumption must be, based on everything else that you and I looked at, that there is some type of retracement that is uh, due out here. Um, you know, I've tried catching it twice uh, with regard to newsletter subscribers. We got uh, stopped out once for break even. We got stopped out this morning for a small loss, a, a reduced loss than when we first entered into it. <laughs> and I'll still be looking for that next uh, signal out here. If it's a major type top, which I don't know that it is or it isn't, what I do know is you and I looked at a trend line inside the Dow. And if there's a major top, that trend line will get busted through. And if that trend line gets busted through, that's what promises lower price for months to come. And, you know, and that's, well, my take, that's my take yeah. longer term, medium term, short term out there. Good. No, Steve, thank you very much. And I'll end it on this. I uh, read a really good article over the weekend, and it's pretty amazing. Um, for longer-term investors, if you miss three of the biggest moves within one given calendar year, you just missed eighty percent of the market move. Yeah, those are. I mean, those are. Those are. Those are. That's great information. Absolutely. Um, you know. No, of course, no, of course yes, we, we're day traders, intraday traders. So, you know, it's a whole different story. I'm just talking about the four hundred one k's and the IRAs and such. And, and it's a, it's a great piece of advice. But what it what that's actually put out there a lot by the by the by the absolute buy and hold folks or the people that believe that you really can't time a marketplace out there. Um, we're just now at those stages on the longer term where I think people just simply need to be careful. We are not out of the yeah. woods 
uh, just yet. And, you know, right. nothing uh, shows it more so than, you know, if you take a look at this year here, it has been one heck of a choppy year for all yeah. of 2015, well, I, really I, since... Since October, since the since the uh, uh, since uh, Abe went ahead and really turned on the printing presses over right. in Japan, the thought process would have been that some of that money would have really, uh, uh, you know, come over here into our market. But they haven't. We've been in basically a narrow banded trading range in the S and P 500 for a year now, from 2016 to 2130. That's not good for that's you know, and obviously we've even broken the 2016 level. So. In any event, great. hey, great great to speak to you. Glad to have Good. assisted, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks a lot, Steve. Have a great day. All righty. That was uh, Ben in uh, Tallahassee. Now, I think that um, what haven't I really covered out here? Um, you know, I, I think we've got our take. And, again, uh, somebody, you can label it Stevie's take, but it's really not. We're just looking at these charts and these chart patterns that are out there. If we look at the New York Stock Exchange, and I use that, and I just pull this back here for you, you're going to see other time periods where we have price moving higher, and we have the uh, declining price oscillator above the uh, zero line. And every time that happens, one of two things takes place. Either the market, the market corrects or, or, or just really moves sideways inside of a trading range out here. And it's worked this way like forever. And so, you know, that in essence is what's going on. Now, where are the markets going to? So we've, you know, let's take a look at daily charts and daily patterns out here. Let's try to figure that out. And if we take a look at the Dow, what the Dow has completed today is a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to the upside. And that is coming off of the uh, August 24th level inside of the Dow. So from that low to the high that uh, took place here on September 17th, disregard those volume uh, bars out, out there. Let me do this. Let me turn them off. That way nobody has to get confused. And I'll turn it back on. We get to stocks. So you can see that the one-to-one -one price projection was 17505 The actual high so far today was 17484 You know, close enough for my line of work out there. Now, you got to remember this, that only 60% of the time does the market or does a stock or does anything make a one-to-one -one lightning bolt pattern out here. The way this came into the D point, that's what we're referring to is the one-to-one, -one, A, B equals C, D out here. The way that we've come into it, unless there is a large sell-off at the end of the day, this is a wide-ranging bar. And wide-ranging bars are typically not the way that a party gets ended, to the upside or to the downside. Now, price could move sideways along this uh, wide-ranging bar at this one-to-one -one level, or price could go up and actually tend its, and test its trend line inside of the Dow. And that trend line would say, and that's the trend line coming off of the May 20th high and the July 20th high out there. So that's the trend line we're using. You know, today that's priced around 17700 something like that out there. That's what the Dow has done, is doing. If we look at the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is trying to I guess we'll give it an A to B equals CD pattern out here. And that A to B equals CD says you're going up to the next level. The next level would be about the 2067 area. In the case of the S&P 500, what it has done today thus far, which is very bullish, is it has broken a trend line. And that trend line is the one that comes off of the July 20th high. So July 20th, and then we basically use the August 19th level, and you can see that price has broken above that trend line. Hey, maybe those, uh, maybe those declining price oscillators, price just pulls back and tests the trend line and then takes off from there. I don't know. We can also see prices slice through the 0.618 retracement level. That says the S&P 500 could easily make a run for 2,076 out here, your 2,051 as we speak right now. If we take a look at the NASDAQ composite, the NASDAQ is trying to break a trend line out here. That trend line being the one from July 20th as using that as your high, August 5th as your high. And you can see that right now the body of the candle is sitting right there right smack dab on that trend line. If we see a move above that trend line, that then offers the promise of hope of 5155. And that would be your one to one A to B equals CD. And for goodness sakes, if it can get up there, it might as well go ahead and try to test the highs from July 20th. But right now, what you and I know is it's up against a significant line of resistance. Where it closes today and or tomorrow is very important inside the NASDAQ. 
inside the Russell 2000. You and I took a look at that. The Russell 2000 is screaming to us, yelling to us, hey, not so fast. That's exactly what the discretionary and consumer staples ratio is, is, is telling you and I. Hey, not so fast. That's exactly what the price oscillators with declining tops are telling us. Hey, not so fast out here. Where is it going to come from? I don't know. Where are the So what is the Russell 2000 doing as far as price levels? It's not doing anything. It's kind of doing diddly as we speak right now. Um, you know, it's not up near a trend line. Uh, that trend line would be somewhere in the 1180-ish type area out here. So the Russell 2000, not a whole lot to report on. Uh, let's go take a look at at uh, one of the uh, indices, one of the best indices that our man Z Zorro inside the uh, Tiger's Den uses out here. And I'm sure he's taking a look at it. And he's taking a look at the Wilshire 2000. So if we take a look at the Wilshire 2000, Wilshire 5,000. Sorry, I got the 2,000s, the 1,000s, the 5,000s, the whole thing out here. If we take a look at it, it's actually breaking above a horizontal line of support or resistance. Resistance. But it's got a diagonal level that it's got to breach in order for there to be a breakout. If the Wilshire 2000 breakout occurs, which is just simply using the high from July 20th, using the high from August 18th, then no matter what those divergences that you and I are taking a look at, then they're probably wrong. And because they've always worked in the past, we're going to be able to say, guess what? They don't always work in the past. Because remember, back in October of 2015, they didn't work so well for us. But at this stage of the game, you know, the widest swath of the marketplace still has higher to go before it actually can break out. So that's what's going on. Okay, well, how about the NDX 100? Let's go ahead and take a look at the NDX 100. In the case of the NDX 100, now this here broke out above a descending trend line price channel. Those are the yellow lines on my screen out here. It broke out above that. It did some break dancing on October the 9th, really October the 8th and the 9th out here. And what we can see is that it now from high to low, high to low in the NASDAQ being the July 20th high down to the low on August 24th, it's sitting right smack dab at the 0.786 retracement level, 4,500. Even Steven out here. The actual interest session high has been 4504. If, in fact, the NASDAQ, the NDX 100, let's go take a look at Apple too. If, in fact, the NDX 100 is able to break above 4500, not 4502 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7, but really break it. We'll call it 4520. Uh, if it's able to do that, she's on her way back to test the high maybe even just slightly take out the high from July 20th out there. Of course, if we were to take a look at volume, you know, right now we can say volume schmalium out here. But if we do take a look at volume, we look at the uh, queues, you've got 25 million shares that have traded thus far. 25 million shares says it's probably going to do somewhere around the 40 million share lot today. Now, 40 million shares, in essence, is taking out a swing point from September 17th. Let's put that volume bar back on there because I don't know what it is off the top of my head. And it was volume on that trading day of uh, 56 million shares. So we know that it's, this has taken out a swing Swing point or is taking out a swing point and doing it on light volume. If you get it closed underneath 108.72, it's within the realm of possibility. You'll have a failure inside the queues of a swing point. Um, you know, whether or not that's going to turn into anything or not, I don't know. I think you got to take a look at other elements out here. But what we know is that the queues are above that swing point. What does that say? Even if we take a look at retracement levels, we're probably somewhere right near that 0.786 level, are we not? No, we're above the 0.786 retracement level. The Qs, if you were going to take a look at this chart, says, hey, guess what? The party's not over till I get to 114.39, till I go test the high of July 20th. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's up 280, S&P's up 31. China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. 
Direction's daily CSI 300 China A-Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A-Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank as a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 274, S&P's up 30. We're going out to Boston to speak with uh, Tom. Tom, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing very well, Steve. How about yourself? Excellent. Thanks so much. You uh, wanted to take a look at uh, DUST, the Direction Daily Gold Miner Bear out there, uh, ETF. Tell me what you're doing, how I can assist you. Well, I just wanted to thank you for the honor. You gave me some great advice on the Nuggets. So, uh, uh, a little while ago, I entered the dust and uh, just maybe a quick trade um, on the dust to see if the gold uh, can push down just a little bit here. 
Okay. Um, you know what I would be looking at inside the trade to the downside here, that uh, 1201 price point, you're at 1317 right now. You know, that would be uh, an area where this may find some support out here. And uh, I don't know where your stop is, but I wouldn't let this get above 1560. Um, that's for sure. Because if it does that, it's likely on its way up to 1852 or so as I take a look at it. Um, I think that uh, you know, we, if we spoke about the nugget trade, uh, I still believe that the better setup on this um, is to be patient and wait for that next uh, long trade inside of the uh, miners out here. But you're but you're in this trade, and I would. What was your was was your target area much below the 1201 area? Maybe was it the swing point low from October 14th at around 1150? Nope. Or <clears throat> I just got in at 1281 today. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, I'd be I'd be careful out here because the miners have been um, have been really strong, and so I would assume that dust is the opposite of the uh, direction of the uh, like the nugget or the XAU. Yeah. And yeah. just real quickly, if we take a look at how the weak uh, performers are out here, you know, I put AB, uh, ABX uh, Barrick Gold inside that category, and it's not really budging today. To the downside, um, I'm just waiting for some market profiles. But even those, even those equities, individual equities, Tom, that have been weak out here, you know, um, you know, they're they're not. They didn't do much yesterday uh, with the pullback in gold. They really haven't done much today. Doesn't mean that it's not going to get down still to that 693.708. I, I still believe that that gold has a little bit lower to move, but it may not be anything. It may just be more in time than it is in, in price. So when I say yeah. lower, either one of those, you know, could be the uh, factor out here. So I just haven't, uh, I, you know, you've got uh, Newmont Mining. I think NEM, you know, is probably another one that, uh, you know, is it was with inside the top 10. Um, and that's not really hasn't budged much. You know, this is it's not a great looking of all these uh, gold mining equities out here, mining equities. You know, I just pulled up two that really don't look great. Um, but they haven't fallen apart either uh, since this uh, short-term top has been placed out there in gold. So I'd, I'd just be careful with that trade. Well, I appreciate your advice, dear Steve. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Anytime. That was Tom in uh, Boston. Hey, gold's trading off a buck. Uh, and, and the other thing I didn't mention, you've got the U.S. dollar index up $120.26 right now. Just take a look at the U.S. dollar index. It's got some pretty good volume behind it. I believe we're in the December contract. So, uh, you know, I'm showing that the, the U.S. dollar index, like, you know, 46,000 contracts to the upside. That doesn't matter. The whole point is uh, that you've got uh, gold moving topside, uh, or gold doing basically nothing with the U.S. dollar index moving higher out here. So, you know, it's it, the, the story inside of Goldilocks today, you'd have to say, looks a pretty darn uh, bullish out here. So, uh, folks, stay tuned. Our man David White is going to be up next because it is Terrific Thursday. That means we've got a terrific lineup. You've got Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5, Andy Heck from 5 to 6. Have a, a great day, extraordinary day, and I look forward to seeing you on fantastic and fabulous Friday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching.
Tiger TV.